Good morning, my friends. My name is John Phipps, and this is my morning devotional. I want to thank you for joining me. And happy Thanksgiving. It is so good to see you guys today on uh, Thanksgiving. Wow. I mean, um, it's hard to believe that it's Thanksgiving already. It seems like it was just summertime, and now we're celebrating Thanksgiving with our family. So I hope you guys are going to have a great day today as you go and meet with your families. Good morning, Michael and Trish. Thank you for joining me. Good morning, Ben. Uh, I don't know what uh, today holds for you. Uh, good morning, Becky and Shirley. Um, but I know there's probably um, some family waiting for you. And, and if you don't have, good morning, Jean. Good to see you, buddy. Hope you're doing well. Uh, but uh, if you don't have anyone to spend Thanksgiving with, uh, by all means, let us know. Good morning, Susan. Uh, our day today is actually quite simple. I've told you we're not conventional. If you watched my devotion yesterday, um, no turkey, no stuffing, no mashed potatoes and gravy, um, no cranberries. Today is cheese enchiladas. Uh, Monty's already been in the pool. Good morning, Sheila. And I'll probably swim with Weston and Montgomery after we eat. Um, we have lots of snack foods on Thanksgiving. It's very typical of us to not worry about calories, just as I ask you probably, uh, don't worry about what you're gonna you know, eat today. Just worry about calories tomorrow if you want to, but don't worry about it today. Today is a day to relax and enjoy family and be thankful. Good morning, Hillary. Thank you for joining me. I'm surprised I've got so many people on here on Thanksgiving morning. Good morning, Esther. And uh, I, I just, uh, I know calories don't count on Thanksgiving, right? Isn't that what they say? So I've got a confession to make. Um, um, Trish says it's a rough day for her. We're praying for you, Trish. So here's my confession. I woke up this morning, I had a cup of coffee. Not unusual. First thing I usually do, brush my teeth, then have my coffee. After I had my cup of coffee, I had Cheetos. I never have Cheetos, never. I mean, I'm very, well, okay, shouldn't say never. It's my favorite snack foods. I rarely have it. I'm very disciplined that way. But like I said, calories don't count on Thanksgiving. So Dina brought brought home snack foods the other day. It was just a matter of me finding them. And then um, uh, that's, and then I went back to sleep. I actually woke up, had coffee, Cheetos for breakfast. Good morning, Janif. Went back to sleep set my alarm so I wouldn't miss my devotion. I knew what I was gonna talk about already. And then I woke up from my alarm and I'm having a second cup of coffee. So today, today is a day without discipline apparently, because two cups of coffee before 11 almost never happens. Cheetos in the morning, never happens. Cheetos almost never happen anyway. A lot of you do find this day hard, and I want to just stop and pray for you guys. You know, um, I, I've got a scripture here. We're gonna get into it in just a minute, and, and don't 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 leave because I'm just kind of waiting to get twenty. I may not have twenty today, but many of you are struggling. Um, I'm sorry that you're hurting, that you're going through a rough time today. Uh, let's just pray, Father. I just lift up my friends today. Even as today we are, uh, you know, thankful for so many blessings that you brought into our lives, Lord. We are also uh, reflective, some of us, Lord, of other thanksgivings that have gone by that were more happy than today. Some of us are grieving uh, on here today on this Facebook Live. And I think of them, Lord, those who have lost loved ones, those whose thanksgiving is going to be different. And I pray for them. There are many, Lord, that need prayer this morning. And they need a, uh, they just need a, um, a little time with you, Lord. A little time to, um, to get through this day. Sometimes the holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas, can be unpleasant. Even though they were meant to be um, joyous. I'd be with those who are hurting today, I pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. 
Well, thank you guys for uh, opening with prayer with me. Good to see you. Um, yes, that's fine. She said, eat, drink, and be merry, Janif. You bet. I'm going to do all that today. And I'm, I may have more Cheetos later, except I think I, 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 I finished them all. But um, I'm sure Dina's got other snack foods for me. So anyway, shall we get to it? We got 14 people on here. We had 15. We've lost one or two. Um, but I say, uh, let us get into the Word of God, okay? I hope this strengthens your hearts because I know many of you are hurting and going through uh, difficulty today. Uh, I'm looking at Philippians chapter 2, and um, if you, um, if I have a scribe with me today, can you write uh, Philippians 2.12? That'd be nice. We're going to start there, and we're going to flip around to a couple different passages of Scripture, but, um, you know, we... We're celebrating Thanksgiving, but you know when we start to count our blessings, you know, like the song says, we name them one by one. Sure, that sounds good and great, but but a lot of times when other people are celebrating and thankful, it's easy for us to complain and to fault find what other people have and what we don't have. And so this is just a gentle reminder to us today, Philippians um, chapter two, verse twelve. Therefore, my dear friends. As you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Now, I'm going to stop right there. I think that's really important that we remember that, first of all, uh, that we have to obey the Lord's presence. We have to obey the Lord's will in our life, whatever that is, whatever that looks like, whatever that feels like, my friends. Uh, God has given us everything. All things are permissible, but not all things are beneficial, okay? Like Cheetos. Cheetos are permissible, but they're not necessarily beneficial, except on Thanksgiving. Um, they are a blessing on Thanksgiving, because I told you calories don't count. But when... The Apostle Paul is telling the church in Philippi, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. He is saying, live your life to be very disciplined, to be very careful, to be very mindful of everything that you do and say. We're going to take a look at uh, 2 Corinthians 7.15. 2 Corinthians 7.15. If you have your Bible and you want to flip over there, you can. Otherwise, I'll do it for us. 2 Corinthians 7, 15. Again, from home here, this is not my typical Bible. So it takes me a little longer to get there. Be patient. Here we are. And so we're just going to cross-reference this. It's beautiful. And it says, And his affection for you is all the greater when he remembers that you were all obedient, receiving him with fear and trembling. Do you receive the Lord with fear and trembling? Not, not in fear like a, an abused child would to his or her father or a slave will to the master who has uh, whips and cords and things like that, you know? Not, 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 not as um, someone who mistreats you, but as someone who loves you and cares for you and wants the absolute best for you. I absolutely love that. Verse 14, we're going back to Philippians chapter 2, 14. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. I love that. I love that. Do everything without arguing or complaining. I told you, all things are permissible, not all things are beneficial. And then the Apostle Paul tells us to do everything without complaining or arguing. Some of you today are going to be baited at the dinner table over politics. Let me pre-warn you, my friends. Don't give in to it. Whatever they say about Donald Trump, let it go. Whatever they say about President-elect Joe Biden, let it go. It's not important. You do not have to agree with them to have peace and harmony and unity with them. They're your family. They're your friends. Just learn to be silent. 
Sometimes your opinion is not that as important as you think it is. I'm going to say that again, and this may be offensive to some of you. Some of your opinions may not be that as important to others as you think it is. Because your opinions can be divisive, hurtful. My friends, it doesn't matter if you're right. Don't let your methods become your message. If you're taking notes, write that down. Don't let your methods become your message. That simply means don't let your, you know, your agitation, your frustration uh, about politics or uh, some other uh, topic, maybe even it's religion today. Don't let your methods of how you respond to other people be the message that you portray. All right? So it says here, uh, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Many of you are going to be children of God today. You're, you're children of God, but you're meeting with people that are warped. And we know they're not children of God. And we know they don't see the world through a biblical lens like you do. So have mercy on them. Be patient with your family today, my friends. All right. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky to close out verse 15. We're looking at Philippians 2.15 in case you just joined us. I, I, I want that for my life today. I want that for my ministry today. I want our church to be like that. I want our church to, to shine like stars in the sky. So if you go out at night, it's black. And I want to shine like a star in the sky. You know, I want to stand out. Not in a way that brings glory to me. That's not what I'm talking about. But bring, bring glory to God. I want our church to bring glory to God. I want my family to bring glory to God. And that's what it says in verse 15. Verse 16 says, As you hold firmly to the word of life. We are holding on to God's word. As we shine bright like stars in the galaxies. Because without God's word, how can we shine? Without God's word, there is no shining like bright stars in the universe, my friends. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ, the Apostle Paul says, that I did not uh, run or labor in vain. The Apostle Paul wants to boast, and he wants to boast before the Lord, but he doesn't want to boast about himself. He, he, he talks about that in another passage of Scripture, but he wants to boast about the, the great things that God had done in his life. Remember, the Apostle Paul was an accuser of those that were followers of the way. That's what they called the early church. They were followers of the way. And it was the Apostle Paul who had... Um, basically given instructions that anyone who was teaching or preaching about Jesus could be persecuted and condemned to death. And who was it that became the second martyr in the early church? But Stephen. And it was the apostle Paul at that time, Saul, who gave his blessing. And because he gave his blessing, an innocent man was murdered. And that man's name was Stephen. And Paul is saying, I still am running the race. I'm still running the race. That I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. He talks about boxers who beat the air. He talks about people who run in vain, like shadow boxing, and people who are like on a treadmill, but they're not going anywhere. They're just running. My friends, do you ever feel like that's happening in your life? Do you ever feel like maybe you're working too hard and not seeing any results? Do you ever feel like, you know, nothing you do or say gets um, appreciated? Do you ever feel like, you know, the, the work of your labor is never counted? My friends, let me just remind you this morning on Thanksgiving that God loves you just the way you are. But he has put you on a path to fulfill his glory in your life. And sometimes it's bringing a meal to a neighbor. 
and you didn't lead them to Christ. Sometimes it's giving a cup of cold water, as Jesus says, to one of these little ones because they believe in my name, as Jesus says. So you are blessing the body of Christ. Sometimes you are being a blessing to those that are not in the body of Christ. No one is like Billy Graham. We're not leading thousands or hundreds of thousands of people to the Lord. Boy, it'd be great if we did. I would be the, the first one to want to sign up for that assignment, but it's not given to me. So I got to do what I can. But I am not shadow boxing. I am not running aimlessly as if I don't know which way to go, my friends. I don't run as if I'm on a treadmill. Or like the Apostle Paul says, do not run or labor in vain because my eye is set on a target and I will hit that target, my friends. Even if I don't get there as soon as I'd like to, even if I have a couple detours along the ways, some missteps from time to time, I will hit my target because God will see me through and he will see you through as well. Let's take a look at Philippians 2.17. He says, but even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice, I'm going to stop right there. Now, he is speaking about old things. This is not the new covenant. He is speaking about old things. He says, if even I am being poured out like a drink offering on the sacrifice, the drink offering on the sacrifice, the sacrifice was most important. The drink offering was added to the sacrifice, but the sacrifice, that is the burnt offering, was the greatest offering. Nobody cared about the drink offering, the, 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 the drink that was being poured over it. The Apostle Paul is saying, my life means nothing. I am simply being poured over the sacrifice or the burnt offering that it might be a pleasing aroma to God. And you are that offering. You are that sacrifice, is what he's saying. The Apostle Paul is saying, it's not about me. I'm just a drink that's being poured out over the sacrifice so the sacrifice can be offered at the altar to God as a pleasing aroma to his nostrils, as it says in the Old Testament. It's beautiful. It's beautiful imagery. Verse 17. But even if I'm being poured out like a drink, offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith. I am glad and I rejoice with all of you. So even though he's saying, I am living for you, I am putting your, your needs ahead of my own, for the Bible says, esteem others higher than yourselves. Remember that. The Apostle Paul is saying the same thing here. I am being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice. I am putting your needs above my own. If I do that, he says, I do not run in vain because I'm being poured out as a offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith. I am glad and I rejoice with all of you because it will be great when you enter the kingdom of God. So I wanna ask you, my friends, do you believe in verse 18? Philippians 2, 18, do you believe that? This is what it says. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. You see, it's a Thanksgiving message after all. But the thanksgiving in this particular passage of scripture is that God is allowing you to be poured out as an offering on the sacrifice. Kind of like my cup of coffee here. Poured out, not better than the sacrifice, but poured out. Whatever you value in life, my friends, whatever you hold dear that is of this world, it will one day be taken from you. Even your very heart and your body and everything that you have, your, you, know, you know, everything that you strive to be will be taken from you. So why not pour it out while you still can? All the love 
that you have. All the sacrifices that you can make for others, as the Bible says, esteem others higher than yourselves. That just simply means to love them more than you love yourself. And, 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 and so that's exactly what Paul is doing. He's saying to the church in Philippi that I love you more than I love myself, that I am the drink offering on the sacrifice, but you are the sacrifice. He isn't saying that he is sacrificing them. He is saying that he is sacrificing himself, that they are presented at the altar of God. And I love that. So Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, says John the Baptist. If that is true and Jesus made himself the sacrifice, are we willing to be that drink offering that's poured out over the sacrifice of this world? That sacrifice are the people that God has encouraged us to love, to love into the kingdom, to love no matter what even though they sometimes appear to be unlovable. Remember that when you're with your families today, that you literally are their servants. Not their doormats, but their servants. Allow yourselves to be humble today, to be kind today, to be gentle, to be that drink offering poured out over the sacrifice because they need to see Jesus today. My question is, will they see Jesus in you? Because that is the joy of the Lord, is to allow other people to see Jesus in our life, through our testimony, through our love. And that, my friends, is thanksgiving. If you truly love God and give thanks to God, then allow yourselves to be that drink offering, poured out over the sacrifice, so that other people can be blessed because of you and your love for Jesus. Everything we have is God's. Don't hold on to it. Let it go, my friends. If any of you are struggling with sin and temptation today, I pray that you would ask God to cleanse your heart, to give you strength, to be mighty and strong. Maybe the world has you in a tailspin today. Maybe you're, you're focused on, you know, what you're going through, and it's hard to be thankful. We talked about those who are grieving today. I know we already prayed for them, but maybe the best way to work through that is to allow our hearts and minds to be poured out as a drink offering onto someone else. I know when I'm feeling grief-stricken or depressed, what I do to make myself feel better is to pour into somebody else, to give back, to get my mind off of my own difficulty, my own troubles, to get my mind off of my own grief. I try to bless somebody else's life. I'm not saying it always works and I'm not saying it's easy, my friends, and I'm not minimizing your pain. So please don't misunderstand me. But I am saying that sometimes it helps. And then be around people who like to laugh. Spend time with people who are positive and upbeat, who can make you smile, who love life, and will encourage you today. Will you pray with me? Father, I thank you for this reminder today that we are a drink offering being poured over a sacrifice. The sacrifice, God, is the people around us Paul poured himself over his subjects, the people that he loved, the people that he ministered to. Some of them loved him back and some of them didn't. Some of them despised him, but he didn't care. He loved them anyway. Father, I pray that you would give your people encouragement today. I pray that you would help them, Father, to be thankful for what they have. Help us not to focus on what we don't have, as tempting as it is. I'm thankful that Weston is coming over today to swim with me, to be with me. I don't focus on the fact that he can't live with me anymore. 
I'm not going to think about that today. And even as I cry as he leaves, as I do every time he leaves, Father, I'll enjoy the time that I have with him, knowing that it's a blessing to be with him, even if I can't keep him overnight. God, you are good. And I think about childhood thanksgivings and all the blessings that went with that with the aunts and the uncles and the cousins and all that I miss my mom and how I miss my father who's been gone many years now father I am thankful for what I have and thankful for those memories that I cherish I can't go back to them if I could I would Lord but I can't so I'm thankful for what I have and help me today to be a, a drink offering poured out over others that I might be a blessing to someone else. And help us, Lord, all to live sacrificially the way Jesus did as he loved others, even on the cross. We thank you, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, my friends. As always, we are almost right on schedule. I actually finished a few minutes early, but I love you guys. Have a great day today, and I see you on there, Mom. I don't have my glasses on, but I see your name there. Have a blessed day, everybody. Enjoy your families. Um, maybe the Lions would win. I would be very thankful for that. So I'm hoping the Lions win. That would be a miracle. Imagine that. Anyway, I hope that every Thanksgiving, and every Thanksgiving, I'm disappointed. But that's okay. I'm still thankful. Be blessed, my friends. I love you guys. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day.